Hello everybody, Flick here and welcome to a Let's Look At of Dark Souls 2 Scholar of the First Sin. This is the PS4 version that you're going to be seeing today as I talk a little bit about the game. I'm in offline mode because I am currently playing pre-release. This is a review copy given to me by Bandai Namco, so keep that in mind. Although I do have a long history of Dark Souls 2 content on my channel. I played it through twice on PS3 and PC, as well as covering the DLC. Anyway, this is partly a kind of Game of the Year edition, but also kind of a, a remake. And we'll get into that as I go. First of all, a spoiler warning, I'm going to be running around the Lost Bastille for the purposes of this video, which is, as you can see, roughly five hours into the game, depending on which route you go, at a leisurely pace. I'm aware the game could be speedrunning like an hour, but you know what I mean. So I'm level 57, it's five hours into the game, Lost Bastille, this is your only warning about spoilers, so leave now if you don't want any. And with that, let's jump into the save file I have going. So yeah, I've, I've got a lot of experience with Dark Souls 2, but... Scholar of the First Sin does things a little bit different. There's also a few versions of it, so I'm going to go over that first before I jump into the Lost Bastille. Then I can talk a little bit about how I'm actually finding the game. But first of all, yes, there's my character. I died at some point. I can't actually remember what killed me, but I'm currently hollow. I'm going to assume at least a little bit of a base knowledge about Dark Souls 2, the universe, etc. And not cover the very basics. I mean, I'm sure you'll be able to pick it up from what you see me playing anyway. But anyway, the various versions of Scholar of the First Sin. If you are an existing owner of the PC version that's currently available, or the PS3 or Xbox 360, you'll be getting a free patch which adds some additional story, NPCs and events, as well as extended item descriptions. By the way, can you tell I'm turning to read a picture I've got on my other monitor <laughs> because otherwise I'm going to forget half of this. And also some balance patching that's going to be happening. That's available to everybody for free. But if you want the DLC, the three episodes, uh, Crown of the Sunken King, Crown of the Old Ivory King and Crown of the... What was the other one? Sunken, Iron King and Ivory King. That's the three. You still need to buy those separately. But you get all that for free and your current saves will still apply to the new version. There's also a new release of Scholar of the First Sin on past-gen consoles, PS3 360, and there's a DX9 version of it going to be on PC as well. That has the DLC included in the price. So, and also your current saves will pass over as well. That's about the only change, however. So do keep that in mind. What is new, though, is in the version I'm currently playing. So the PS4 version, the Xbox One version, and the DX11 version for PC. You get the DLC included for free, as I said, the three Ivory King, Sunken King, etc. You get the new events, you get the new balancing patch, but on top of that, you get something that's actually very interesting and changes the way the game plays quite significantly. I wasn't expecting quite the big change it makes. But you get new enemy placement, new gameplay, and new design. As well as performance upgrades, a graphical upgrade. On the console at least this definitely looks a lot better than the PS3 version did, but put it that way. And you also get more room for online players. I believe the max is now six. So three co-op, three invaders, I think. But yeah, that is the most interesting fa uh, thing I've found. Despite playing through this game many, many times, it feels like a fresh experience because of what they've done with the, the design of the game. A, a vague example for people who are probably familiar with Dark Souls 2 and the way it plays. I have never been to Old Iron Keep yet with this character. As you saw, I've been playing for about 5 hours, but I haven't went in that direction at all. And I already have the Dull Ember. Why do I already have it? Well, because I found it about an hour and a half into the game. Key items, like for another example, the Lost Bastille's Antiquated Key, totally different place. And when I went in and I heard that they were doing new enemy placement and such like, I expected that what they meant was that they were just balancing the game to make it harder because people, well some people complained that the difficulty wasn't quite high enough prior to New Game Plus. But actually it's not that. It isn't just that they've made it harder. Yes, yeah, some areas have enemies that you wouldn't expect that do make the area harder assuming you aggro them. Like for example, when you first walk into Forest of Fallen Giants, you see one of those cycloptic hippos wandering around. It doesn't aggro you, but it's there. But that's just the start of how things change. Certain areas of the game, they play completely differently. Like, I don't want to go into de details for spoilers, but the the forest that has the assassins in it and whatnot, and the area beyond that, again, without going into too many details for spoilers, totally different, entirely reworked. Not just from an item placement, but there's brand new enemies as well that act differently. But as I was saying, it doesn't feel like it's just to make the game harder. It really does feel like they listened to feedback and thought what can we do to make the design of the game 
smoother, makes more sense, and plays a little bit better. Like, for exam example, I've never visited here yet, and yet there's no Hyde Knight sitting here. Well, look for them in the Tower of Flame, is all I'll say about that. Also, there's no uh, Pyromaniac Mummy guy. What is that? That's an Arbalist. So, as I say, I've never been here yet, so the new enemy placements will be fresh to me. Oh, there's a sniper up there as well. I didn't actually mean to fall down here, but we shall make do. So I am very, very curious to see where new enemies are. But as I was saying, yeah, it's not just to make the game harder, so please don't assume that all oh, they've just bunged the hardest enemies all over the place to make you hate your life, because that's not it. The best example of that that I can give from what I've seen so far of the game is that they've made it a bit easier for new players to get adapted to how bosses work by not making the first boss easier, but by giving you an easier option. So... I won't say what the first boss is again, just in case, for spoilers. Oh, there's a guy up there. Come here, dog. Oi. Come here. But yeah, when you go to the last giant, there's one, in the original version of Dark Souls 2, there's one NPC summon available to help you. Pate. And he's only there, assuming you're human, if you spoke to him correctly and got his dialogue options, etc, etc. Even if you didn't do that, in Scholar of the First Sin, there is another NPC available who is basically built to make the first boss very, very easy. He's a dual shield wearing, Havel armor wearing NPC that has the ring on that increases their aggro. In other words, he's custom built for you to find the first boss very easy. He's like a crutch for new players. Experienced players, they will have no need for the NPC because they'll know how to... Oh, hello, Pursuer! What are you doing here, my good man? This is the second time I've had you jump at me at a place you shouldn't be. I have heard that the Pursuer is more of a Pursuer in this version, so there you go. I have already beaten him as a boss, incidentally, but he's still hounding me. Where did he appear from? Oh, right, I'm going to get sniped if I stand up here as well. That totally threw me off with what I was saying. Did he despawn because I came up here? I assume so, but will he go back if I fall down? Hmm, let's give it a go. He must have spawned behind me. That hit me. You get. Oh yes, I was talking about the the new NPC that can help you with the first boss. Yeah, it's custom built to make it very, very easy to beat the boss. Very, very easy. Hey, there's more dogs here than before. Right, where did the Pursuer teleport in from? It must have been back here, right? It must have been, but I don't see... Was it a one-time thing, perhaps? Oh, so that dog kind of lost aggro there, didn't it? Hmm... Oh, Pursuer? I'm not sure if you're a souped up version or not. That used to be a door, right? Oh, I miss not having a torch. Actually, I should have a flame butterfly to handle that. Yes, I do. Let there be light. That's another thing they've changed. Certain areas of the game, their lighting has been altered. I'm not sure if that's part of the free upgrade or if that's exclusive to Scholar of the First Sin. Oh, that's the suicide guys. <laughs> oh, no, not the suicide guys, but they do kind of knock you over and then do elemental bursts. Annoying, in other words. I don't think he was there before either. And there used to be, in here, there used to be one sword guy, right? Except now it's those guys. Hmm. Don't stand up. Don't mind me. No, no, no. Don't, it's okay. Don't bother standing up. I'll mind myself. So, they have really looked at the design of the game and thought, how can we make this better, I think. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean they've achieved it, and I actually think there's nothing wrong with Dark Souls 2 as it existed, but I know some people did have a problem with it. In fact, it was my favourite game of 2014. So I don't have a problem with what they were doing before. But it's it's good that they're listening. And so far, it's better. Estes Flask Shards, Sublime Bone Dust, they're all in different places. There's a lot more... Well, for example, that one. Oh, wait, no, that was always there, wasn't it, that one? Mm, I can't quite remember. Or was that Sublime Bone Dust before? Either way, they're different. There's more focus on requiring a lot more fragrant branches of yore to progress through areas you used to be able to just walk into if you like. Now, let's see. Is this all the same here? I open this gate. There's two dogs. Yeah, so far so normal. I guess the Pursuer was a one-time thing, although I have found him somewhere else. I came in from the other end of this area as well, after beating the Pursuer as a boss, and he was there as well. So yeah, I did hear that he does hound you a bit more. I don't know what you get for defeating him. I haven't tried beyond the boss fight. I wonder, did they fix the rolling mechanic for this guy up here? 
because sometimes it just messed up royally. No, they did not. That would have been nice if they did that. You know, to easily get the secret that's behind here. I can't remember if you can backstab these guys. It would seem not. So, if you are already using an existing PC version of Dark Souls 2, the price to get into either the DX9 or DX11 versions of Scholar of the First Sin will be reduced. I'm not sure if that's a timed reduction or not. You'll have to look into that yourself at release. I'm recording this prior to it. I'm not sure about the full price. Well, if you already have it on consoles, I think you just, you're just you ladled with the... Ladled? That's not the word I'm looking for. There is a ladle in the game, but that's not the one I'm talking about. Also, there used to be a dog here, and there isn't anymore. Hmm. Hey, if you want to play this version of the game, you're just you're stuck with the full price, I think. There's no upgrade option because you won't be able to prove you own it. So is it worth a full price purchase if you've already played through Dark Souls 2? I would say if you haven't played through the DLC, then yes, because the DLCs were all excellent. They were w more than worth the value they were charging for the, the Crown DLCs. You suck at aiming. You're throwing those fireballs more than you used to because I'm surrounded by explosive barrels. That's what they've done to change you. Yeah, so if you haven't played the DLC, absolutely worth it. In fact, if you haven't played Dark Souls 2 at all, this is probably the definitive version of it. But if you have played the DLC and you had it on consoles, I don't know if enough has changed to warrant you doing yet another purchase of the game. That said, I am enjoying the new placements of everything and the new items and the new balance. By the way, you even run into NPCs in different locations. If you think you know where you're going to run into Lucatio every time, nope, you're going to be surprised. Or Gavlan, nope, again, you're going to have to wander around. So this is new. Those two guys just standing there as normal, and I think that's a suicider over there at the back. Yeah, that is new. And also my sword's already almost broken. Do I have any repair powders on me? No, I do not. Oh dear. Alright, well, we're going to push on a little bit just to see what happens. I might die, but c'est la vie. Uh, one hit isn't too bad. Oh, I timed that wrong. Uh, that's backstab you, or not. I need to get back my parry foo. This area through here was actually very notorious in the first version. It's a, it's a little bit of a ganky area. You open the door and then like six, seven guys rush you. I'm going to be very curious if it's changed. Hello there, sir. Oh wait, you're actually a petrified body, aren't you? Yes, you are. So I can't get in here yet until I get a fragrant branch which means I can't get any further into the Lost Bastille. Interesting. That's like the, the fourth or fifth new petrified enemy that I found. Blocking progress, trying to force you in different directions. Huh. Well, that's a little difficult, isn't it? Because I wanted to carry on in the Lost Bastille, but I don't actually have any other way I can go now until I get a fragrant branch. I might be able to buy one from the Medulla. Do I have any fire bombs on me that might be able to open up that bonfire? No, of course not. I used them all. Oh, wait, no, I do. I totally do. Alright. In that case, let me just put them on my quick bar. I can't remember if this worked, throwing fire bombs at the wall down here to try and open up the bonfire. Now, keep in mind, I don't know if the later areas of the game are just flat out unfair, because I haven't played through the entire game. This is first impressions, not a review, per se. The game itself, I like a whole lot. No, that's not going to work. Damn you, exploding barrel! Do I have the key for this, though? No. I have the wrong key. Oh, wait, no, we totally can. We can go around the, the far door, I forgot. We're still going to be blocked off from some areas, and I don't think we can get to the boss, but I wasn't going to do the boss anyway, so that's fine. Oh, I wonder if going up there is what triggered the pursuer, going around that corner. I bet it was. So let's see, then. In the original version out here, there was about four or five dogs. And of course I have the antiquated key, even though normally you might not, depending on which direction you've gone in. So there's still dogs. That was a very stupid thing I just did. That's what I get for using a fire weapon. And then another one on the right. No, he's gone. Alright, so there's actually less enemies here. I'm very, very curious. Oh, hello there to see what they've done to Shrine of Amana. Have they made it worse? Have they made it fairer? Because it is definitely an unfair era. It's very badly designed in the original game. You have to cheese your way through it if you want to retain your sanity. 
So yeah, I'm really curious about what they've done to the later game areas. I'm forcing myself not to see them yet because I want to see them blind in a playthrough I'm going to be doing with Rory. You may know him from previous series of Dark Souls 2 I've done. Ah, so this is still the same. Please don't break. Do I have a backup weapon? Uh, broadsword is going to have to do. That's not very strong at all, but it'll do. Do you still drop the same stuff? You do. All right. Let's push on a little bit. It's hard for me to be really at all critical about Scholar of the First Sin because I love Dark Souls 2 so much and it's just, it's more of it for me. It was a fantastic game. It still is. I guess it's just a case of whether this offers enough to warrant buying it again. And it goes back to what I was saying before. If you never played the DLC, absolutely. If you did play the DLC, you've already bought it. You're not getting quite as much new stuff. But playing the game differently with these new enemy layers, new enemy types, new items... I mean, speedrunners are probably going to have to change their route, I think, depending on what items are where. So that's very interesting to me. I'd be very intrigued to see a, a new speedrun of the new layout. But it's other things like... The way they've changed the way they want you to play, the way you, they want you to approach certain areas. Also, this room is a lot darker than it used to be. I mean, that's a perfect example of how they've changed the lighting in some areas. I can't see a thing on my monitor. I think you might be able to see it a bit brighter than me because my TV is a little bit dark, but yeah, I can't see a goddamn thing in there. So I still have another flame butterfly. Let's use that to have a little gander. I hope it's not filled with explosive barrels. So before there used to be like, what, two or three soldiers in here and that was it? One to the left of me. Hmm. Suspiciously empty, and then I look up and I see something clinging to the ceiling that I don't know what it is. That is something on the ceiling, right? Do I have a Faris Lockstone on me? I do. Alright, I'll do this. It'll light up the room a little bit. Yeah, that's definitely something on the ceiling, alright. And there's nothing above me, right? No. Okay, let's see what's on the ceiling then. Excuse me, sir. I was an assassin. Ooh, quite strong assassin. Well, actually, no way. I'm using a crappier weapon, so that's why. Backstab! Alright. Let's see if the places in here are still the same. I don't believe any of them were mimics, so I'm not going to bother checking. That might be something I later regret. So, vessel, and then on the other side... Oh, wait a minute. I think all the chests in here were safe. I better check them. I don't want to die to a mimic on camera. That would be embarrassing as hell. Right, so let's see what's in here. Still got the way up there. Okay. Yeah, so as I was saying, I can't be critical of anything I wasn't critical of before, really, other than on consoles that now looks as good as it did on PC. Does the DX11 version on PC seem vastly superior to what it was like on PC before? I don't know. I haven't played it yet. I can't comment. You would need to look elsewhere or look for my series on release day. But it remains a good game, and this is a way for next-gen console owners to now play it if they passed up or weren't able to play it before. Oh yeah, you find the Twin Blade here. The spin-to-win weapon of choice of my previous playthrough. So let's see if anything changed up here. Also apologies for the dog barking in the background. That's the post. I'm recording this quite early in the morning. Is there any other assassins here perhaps? Whoop. When in doubt, forward roll into a room. That applies in real life as well, by the way. I mean, people will look at you weird, but it works. You won't get backstabbed. Right, so that's just a route down. I probably don't want to show off too much more, to be honest, because it's all spoilers for the new enemies and what have you. I'll try and get myself killed by just being a bit haphazard by going up the elevator and seeing what's changed up there. But yeah, Dark Souls 2 Scholar of the First Sin. The version I'm, I've mostly been speaking about is the fresh, brand new version for PS4. Xbox One, and it's what's known as the DX11 compatible version on PC. It's got the additional NPCs, more story, more events, and everything's been reworked. New enemies, new balance, new design. It's interesting. What I've seen so far, it's, it's made it feel fresh again. Hello there. Don't mind me. So beforehand, there used to be some of those enemies inside the... Oh yeah, there still is. There he is. And of course, we know who's upstairs there, don't we? Well, we assume we know, but whether or not he actually is, I guess we can go have a quick little peek. 
another use for a fragrant branch unless it's changed. Let's have a gander. Have a little creep up the stairs there, look out for assassins on the roof, I guess. Oh, there's no roof here, so I guess we're safe. One, two... They've added more enemies here. One, two, three, four, five... Yeah, there used to be four. Hello. I have a torch. Could I interest you in a torch? Hmm, they're neutral. Or just not very observant. Uh, kill the ones that do petrify, actually. <laughs> they're much worse. Hello, Strayed. We'll be back. Ah, yes, I don't have the key for there. Hmm. So down here, is down here any different? See, I'm just getting caught up in wondering what's different now. It looks like this might be semi-semi as before. Still one guy over there, yeah. Alright, well, I guess we can end by running over to... Oh, what was that? Did someone break out down here? Actually, no. Who's that? That's a little weird. Alright, let's head out here and... Oh, actually. I'm going to spoil something very minor. I just want to know if it's different or not, so... Look away. Wait, is this the wrong bit? Is this not where the secret door is? Oh, it's the, it's the lower floor. Alright, let's go down and see if that secret is still the same. It's for nothing to do with finishing the story, for the record. It's absolutely nothing to do with that at all. I know you're in there. Somewhere. Yeah, see, told you. Yeah, it's in here. Oh, it's still a secret. I warned you there might be spoilers. I think that's the same. But, ah, but now we know there's a sniper out here this time. Can I actually get to him from... Oh, hello again, Pursuer. Well, you're fitting to die to, I suppose. Oh, yeah, you've got a lot of HP. I'm not sure I want to mess with you. Oh, and I parried wrong. That's not very nice, Pursuer. Not very nice at all. And he killed me. I actually did parry correctly there, it's just I was too far to the side. So he turns up up there as well, eh? He actually just hounds you through the Lost by Steel, I guess. So I think we're going to end there because I don't want to spoil too much more. If you are interested in seeing yet another Dark Souls 2 playthrough on my channel, this will be the one to watch because everything is different. It feels different, it feels new. But if you're tired of Dark Souls 2, it's not going to convince you otherwise, I don't think. Even with all the new stuff that's added. But keep in mind, you don't have to buy a new version and you will still get some of the new stuff. You just won't get the new layouts, the new design. That's what you're not getting. So, thank you very much for watching. There will be a link to something in the description box below. At the time I'm recording this, it's not yet available on the Steam Store page. But if it is, I will link to the DX11 version, which is the PC equivalent of the version you've been watching me play right now on PS4. I hope you enjoyed and, as I say, look out on my channel, maybe even later tonight or tomorrow, for the first part of another playthrough of Dark Souls 2 with Rory. Playing through this version with all the new stuff and hopefully we'll be surprised together. Until next time, thank you very much for watching and ta-ta for now.